To maintain social distancing means that our public transport system cannot go back to where it left off. And here is a very stark fact. Even with public transport reverting to a full service, once you take into account the two-metre social distancing rule, there would only be effective capacity for one in ten passengers in many parts of our network, just a tenth of the old capacity. So getting Britain moving again while not overcrowding our transport network is going to require many of us to think very carefully about how and when we travel. We've accomplished so much over the past seven weeks of this lockdown. The whole country has been responsible for reducing COVID reproduction or the R rate. Millions of households across the UK have changed their behaviour for the greater good. Getting Britain moving again whilst not overcrowding our transport network represents an another, another enormous logistical challenge. Yet, this is a problem which presents a health opportunity too, an opportunity to make lasting changes that could not only make us fitter, but also better off, both mentally and physically, in the long run. During the crisis, millions of people, millions of people, have discovered the benefits of active travel. By cycling or walking, many have been able to appreciate this remarkably warm summer, sorry, spring, whilst sticking to the guidelines. In some places, there's been a 70% rise in the number of people on bikes, uh, whether that's for exercise or necessary journeys, uh, like stocking up on food. So whilst it's crucial that we stay at home, when the country does get back to work, we need to ask those people to carry on cycling and walking and for them to be joined by many others as well. Otherwise, with public transport capacity severely restricted, more cars could be drawn to the roads of our towns and cities, and they would quickly become gridlocked. We also know that in this new world, pedestrians will need more space. So today, I'm announcing a £2 billion package to put cycling and walking at the heart of our transport policy. To set out how we deliver this, we'll bring forward a national cycling plan for publication in early June, uh, in line with the statutory cycle and walking investment strategy to help double cycling and increase walking by 2025. The first stage, worth £250 million, is a series of swift emergency interventions to make cycling and walking safer. Pop-up bike lanes, wider pavements, cycle and bus only streets, all examples of what people we'll start to see more of. And accompanying the new money, we are, we are today publishing fast-track statutory guidance, effective immediately, requiring councils in England to cater for significantly increased numbers of cyclists uh, and pedestrians and making it easier for them to create safer seat, uh, streets. For employees who want to start to cycle to work uh, but don't have a bike right now, the popular cycle to work scheme already allows employees to save between 25 and 39% of the cost of a new bike, or indeed electric bike. There's been a huge increase in people using this scheme and will work with employers to increase uptake even further. And for those who may have an old bike, perhaps in the shed, and want to get it back to a roadworthy condition, there'll be a voucher scheme for bike repairs and for maintenance. Plans are also being developed to boost uh, bike fixing facilities across the country.